Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. With the seasons changing, I thought we'd do a winter landscape. So I've taped down my paper with some masking tape to my pencil box because I will be using a lot of water for this that I will need to tilt. You'll see what I mean in just a bit. And I've divided my page into thirds. The top two thirds are going to be the sky and the bottom is going to be the ground. So I start by coloring the sides of the sky with some purple. I do try to darken it up towards the top corners and use slightly less pressure towards the bottom. But again, this is going to be a night scenery, so you do want to uh, work your layers into this and make it look darker than you intend because once we add of the war and dries is going to be lighter than what you intend to be. So when using this technique it's nice to apply a good amount of colors in the dry face beforehand. Then I apply some indigo blue to the sides which is a very nice dark deep blue color and I use some black only on the top corners. Then I take my spray bow, it's an Ikea spray bow I used for my plants, nothing fancy, and I color the sky portion of my painting with it. Then you see some horizontal pencil strokes that I'm going to just solve with my finger. You can use a brush for this, but I was just too lazy to go and grab one. And in case you have any allergies and you decide to use your hands like me, please wear gloves. And while everything is still soaking wet, I'm going to sprinkle some kitchen salt over it. The salt you use to season your food, same exact salt you use on french fries. While that dries, I'm coloring the bottom portion of my snowy field with the same exact colors I used for the sky. Mostly the violet and the indigo blue. I'm not going to be using any black for this right now because snow is white. Like when you think about snow, you think about white. But snow does reflect its surroundings and since the sky is this violet color, I want to be reflecting those same hues. So every time I have a snow slope in my painting, I want the part the part that's behind the slope in front of us to be darker, then gradually goes higher upwards, then the slope behind us starts from dark and goes to light, and so on and so on. It's just easier to show you this rather than trying to explain it. I start with a clean brush on the top to keep that area the brightest. And then I work my way downwards towards the darker colors. If I need to go back to a lighter area, the brush needs to be 100% clean. That's why I have a little paper towel on the side. I tap my brush clean onto it and then I proceed to the next area, to the next highlights. Otherwise, if you don't clean your brush, it's all going to look pretty much the same and you're not going to have any values, any depth in your painting. I'm using barely any water for this step, as you can see me constantly tapping my brush onto the napkin. I just want very little, just enough to activate this. And it's perfectly fine if your brush sk skips some bits and some pieces and you end up with some of the white of the paper peeking through. That's perfect, like snow does have sparkles, that is perfectly fine. Now I'm going to repeat the same exact steps on the left side of my foreground. I'm going to add some slopes there because I want the river to be flowing diagonally and the snow kind of slopes into the river. I color the darkest areas with my indigo blue and then lightly hover with my purple over the entire snowy field there. And again, with my brush, I go from light to dark, I do the highlights first and then I move down towards the indigo, clean my brush and start the next slope. Once the sky has dried, I take my black pen, so I've sharpened it to a rather fine point and I'm just laying out where I want my trees to be, so I'm just doing straight lines for the tree trunks, trying to figure out where I want them and how I want them to frame this picture here, so I'll have tall trees on the sides and shorter ones towards the center, so you can really see that nice big bright area that I did with the help of the salt. Then I'm just scribbling on top of each of the lines to add foliage. I'm not going to focus on leaving highlights for the snow for this because I'm going to add them layer on with some white gouache. It's just an easier way to do things because I do want to keep this tutorial very beginner friendly here. So maybe, I don't know, you can do it for some Christmas cards or something, stuff to give away to your family and friends. That's what I think about doing with this painting. So I'm just randomly scrambling over all of these lines to create a basic tree shape idea. I'm not trying to go for realism here. I never really try to go for realism. It's just I'm 
it's just not my thing. A little friendly suggestion I can give you right now, if you've sharpened your pencil to a fine point, I suggest you do the tiny details like the treetops first and then color it in because if you start coloring in big shapes with a finely sharpened pencil, you're just going to waste the tip and you're going to have to resharpen it and that's just going to waste material and these can be expensive, like if you can afford to splurge, do whatever you want. If you're trying to save up cash like me, keep that in mind. And if drawing is not your thing, there will be a free traceable available down in the description box below this video on my Patreon page. The traceable is completely free, but if you'd like to support me and the channel, you can check out the memberships I offer over there where we also do full-time painting tutorials and digital downloads. I believe this painting right here is going to be the digital download for the month of November in case anyone wants to print out their own Christmas cards or whatever. And like always, all the supplies I've used will be also available down in the description. Now with the help of a ruler, because I don't have a steady hand, I'm just going to do three straight lines there going horizontally and that's going to be a very simple bridge because again we'll have a lake below the trees and I'm just adding some vertical lines to help with the railing but yeah that that's literally it that's the whole bridge now I'm going to outline the entire snow field we have with my indigo blue which is the darkest color I've used for the snow I've not added any black to it just outlining it and then I'm likely going to color the inside of the lake with some of the violet. Then I take my brush, I tap it on the napkin because I don't want to have too much water on it. And I lightly go horizontally trying to activate this. And while it is still wet, this is something I never do but I thought it looked really nice for this painting. I take my indigo pencil and I go over the snow edges with it while the lake is still wet that way you get a very harsh deep dark line which I usually don't like but I thought it adds some perfect shadows for this painting. I've also colored the bottom of my trees with the with the indigo and I go lightly with my brush over it to activate them and blend them down towards the snow. I just want to add some shadows below the tree so, so it just makes sense. And lastly, I'm going to finish this painting by rubbing my brush against the purple and the indigo and I'm going to splatter it over the background. I don't know, I just thought it would look really nice here like a snowstorm. Then I take my white wash paint and I add just a smidge on top of all of the tree branches there to make it look like piled snow. And I'm also going to splatter some all over the painting for the sake of cohesion. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of November and thank you all for watching. If you found any value in this video, please let me know by liking, commenting and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel, it really helps with the algorithm. Thank you for watching and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!